Hello everyone, we are back to the uh, particular class where we were talking about the analysis of uh, mental workload and human behavior, right? Okay, now today we will be discussing a very specific tool, uh, we, we call it as multiple resource time sharing model, okay? So, multiple resource time sharing model from the this particular uh, name we understand where there will be a single resource where multiple tasks will share that particular resource or there are mul uh, multiple tasks where one single resource will be uh, giving the input towards that. Okay. So, multiple uh, combination of tasks. So, here the lot of interactions will be there with the human uh, in with the machineries and the resources in a particular system. So, I always suggest uh, all of you to please remember the uh, the understanding of complex system, complex ergo system because in if you go to the industry, you, you, we will come to know that every system is very, very complex in nature. So, it is not uh, one man, one like one operator, one machine and one uh, no, uh, in a single environment. It is always multiple in nature. It is interacting with each other in different domain and different dimensions, right? So, uh, this particular uh, analysis or this particular method actually help us that how we can improvise on our or how we can optimize our system so that the productivity is uh, good and our productivity help us to uh, get more, um, uh, uh, more performance, okay? So, uh, Whenever we are talking about implementation of ergonomics principle or ergonomics theory uh, to, in, a, in a particular system, our always goal is to enhance the productivity whereas we want to save or we want to uh, enhance the well-being of the operator, right? So, this particular theory or this particular model actually uh, uh, make us understand that how we are sharing uh, the information or the sources in a particular system to complete a whole job. So, it is multiple resource time sharing model. Okay. So, let us begin uh, with the detail of the uh, uh, this particular method. So, what it says? It predicts the degree of interference. Okay? It helps us to understand the degree of interference between two time shared tasks. So, if there is a single uh, two tasks where within a single time that do both the tasks need to be completed, what are the varieties of interference are there so that uh, once we understand that what are the interference, how we can uh, change it or how we can monitor it or how we can uh, do the improvisation on that so that our final productivity is good. Okay, so, it predicts the degree of interference between two time shared tasks. It predicts the loss of performance actually it predicts the loss of performance of one or both tasks carried out concurrently relative to their single task baseline measure, measure. okay so when there is uh, there are two three tasks going simultaneously of course we can have an understanding if this task one we do at a time there is no task what is the kind of time taken for task 2 also we have some kind of measurement, task 3 also, task 4 also. Now, e that is the individual baseline. Now, with this particular model or particular method, we do understand if these 3 or 4 tasks are being carried out simultaneously, what are the time interference and what is the loss of performance in the whole process. So, that we will come to know. So, if the loss is too high, then we really need to understand where the intervention need to be uh, uh, need to be given or where we can start the design changes so that the performance is not being hampered. So, its effect on the performance in which the sources of workload are multiple task demand. 
and this particular model is based on the multiple resource theory. This particular model that uh, multiple resource time sharing model is based on the multiple resource theory which was first uh, you know, introduced in 1979 and uh, over the period of time it has a uh, lot of modifications. So, first let us understand or let us take some input from that particular theory. So, in weekends like whatever uh, Professor Wickens said in 1980 and in modified version in 2002, he said that multiple resource theory suggests that several different cognitive resources can be used simultaneously. Okay. So, different cognitive resources can be used simultaneously. So, it, it has a typical structure of this particular theory. It says it can be majorly two types. One that is different task require the same cognitive re resources. Different task requires same cognitive resources. Another says same task require different cognitive resources. Okay, so I am going to give an example. So, different task. Okay, you are writing and you are speaking. Okay, in these two tasks, you need one specific cognitive resources to support it. So, that is one thing. Whereas, the same task, okay, you are writing only. However, you need two cognitive support or cognitive resource to write that. So, this is the two uh, different varieties of example. So, multiple resource theory says it can be two different way. In one case, different task require same cognitive one single cognitive resources whereas, a single task may require two varieties of cognitive resources. In the first case that visual uh, perception information must be processed in a sequence. If two tasks requires single multiple uh, cognitive resources in that case visual perception information those things must be processed in a sequence because you cannot have uh, you cannot do it simultaneously. Right? So, for each task you have to have a sequence. Here comes the interference. Okay. In the second case visual perception, auditory perception both the things can be processed in simultaneously. Okay. So, if you need uh, suppose I am talking about writing. In writing if you need visual as well as auditory you need to process it simultaneously. This is just an example. Okay. So, when we are talking about in industry there are you no know, uh, sets of uh, so big system where a lot of uh, you know, um, informations are processed by a single person or single operator or uh, multiple operators at the same time all these scenarios can happen and we need to analyze it and using this particular method or particular model we can realize or we can understand where are those interference and where the interference are difficult to handle we need intervention over there. Okay, So, this is the importance of this particular theory. Now, when we are talking about these things, let us understand more into detail about the factors. Okay. Here it says multiple resource theory says three different factors are more are important in predicting how well or not a task will be performed when time shared with another. Okay. So, when I am talking about uh, multiple resource theory, it says there are major three factors. One factor is difficulty or demand, job demand, then is extent and the third is allocation. So, these three factors are important in predicting how well or not a task will be performed when time shared with one another. Okay, let us understand more into detail. When I am talking about difficulty or demand, it says difficulty or demand for resources of each single task component, each single task component. It is not simultaneously all the tasks, 
each single task we have to identify. So, driving in a traffic example is more resource demanding than driving on an open area, correct? So, you need lot of resources because you need visual, you need your skill, you need your uh, auditory uh, no, uh, resources, all these information, some, some background uh, understanding, everything is required, right? So, this is uh, when we are talking about driving in a traffic. So, understanding the speed, so all these perceptions are understanding the signal, everything. Whereas, when we are talking about in a open road, of course, it has less demand. Just an example. Now, when I am talking about extent, what it says? Extent, extent to which the two work task demand common or separate attention resources are required. Okay. So, for example, in, uh, in any vehicle, uh, ve visual display will demand more common resources with driving than will an in-vehicle auditory display. Of course, in-vehicle visual displays are more informative, more uh, required than the in-vehicle auditory responses. Now, coming to the allocation, it says allocation of those limited resources between two time shared tasks. If, if there are two or three time shared tasks, how you are actually allocating them. So, driving is emphasized at the expense of using in vehicle technology or the converse. Okay. So, these three factors we are going to consider in this multiple resource theory and these particular method or particular concept we are going to use in this particular uh, uh, what we can say the multiple resource time sharing model. Okay. Now, let us go further. Now, when I am talking about these three factors, let us understand this three dimensional uh, what I can say um, model, four dimensional model. Okay. So, one is processing stages, another is perceptual modalities, then visual channel and the processing code. Here it says there are four important categorical and dichotomous dimension. Four important categorical and dichotomous uh, dimensions that account for variance in time shared performance. Okay. Now, let us understand each of them. First is processing stages. Now, in processing stage when we are uh, we have some kind of information or some kind of uh, uh, yes some kind of information then what we need to do we have to first perceive it and then respond it right here we say perception then recognition or cognition and then responding now here in this particular uh, particular figure you can see that perception and cognition are together and then responding, right? So, it is dichotomous, okay? These two are the perception and cognition and then responding, this is. Now, when I am talking about the perceptual modalities, when I am talking about perceptual modalities, one can be visual, another can be auditory. So, here it is visual, this particular thing and then auditory. Now, when I am talking about the visual channel, one can be focal, another is ambient. Here you can see that focal, this portion and then ambient, right? Now, when I am talking about focal, what it says? Fine details and pattern recognition. Focal means very much detail, right? So, fine details and pattern recognition, whereas in ambient, you are actually looking at the periphery, peripheral visions used for the sensing the orientation and ego motion, fine. The next is processing the code. One can be special, another can be verbal. In special, it says manual responses like tracking, sharing, steering and all those things. Another is verbal responses. So, in this particular way, 
we can actually represent all these four dimensions. Okay, so this is the four dimensional multiple resource model. This is the actual model. Now let us go further with the multiple resource model that particular steps that we are going to follow. So first step is coding the time shared task. When we start, we start with the coding of the time shared task. Once that coding is done, then what we do? Calculate the total demand score. Now, this is very much important for us to understand over here that it is very much skill based. You know, it is from lot of learning you will be able to code them. There are uh, there are always it it is possible that there are difference in opinion in some cases you know when we are actually coding that we will come to know in the next uh, slides okay once we calculate the total demand score we actually calculate the resource conflict score so we have total demand score and then we are trying to understand where are the those conflicts then to calculate the interference score once we understand the conflict we understand the interference and from there we actually apportion the uh, uh, interference score then extend that particular model and apply that model in that particular situation. So let us take all these steps in more detail. So coding the time shared task. Each task is coded by the extent to which it depends on separate resources defined by the four dichotomous dimension. Whatever dimensions we have understood from that particular model, this particular model is very more important. So, you know perception uh, processing stage, per, uh, perceptual modalities, visual channel and the processing code. Under that all these dichotomous uh, factors you need to understand very uh, uh, critically from that particular system and then you have to establish that. So, then only you will be able to code them, visual then auditory. For visual channel you have focal and ambient, in processing you have spatial and verbal. Okay? So what it says that each task is coded by the extent to which it depends on the separate resources defined by uh, the, uh, the four dichotomous dimensions. Then demanding level within each resources can be on simple integer values 1, 2, 3 something like that with greater demand implying the greater value, greater demand, greater value. Each task spawns with uh, what is called the demand vector, okay. The average level of demand across all resources are involved. For example, if it is simple conversion task, it is 1. If it is visual, uh, sorry, simple conversation task, it is 1. If it is a vigilance task, it is 3. Now, this particular 1 and 3, assigning this 1 and 3, this example has taken from this particular paper, this particular reference okay so if it is simple conversation task we take it as one and if it is vigilant task because you have lot of resources involved for that then it is three now let us go into more detail so again that you know factorial understanding so coding a very simple conversational task here it says perception auditory so one working with a memory that is verbal that is 1 and the responses is 1 ok. So, all are 1 1 1 whereas when I am talking about the vis coding of a demanding visual task like you know detecting the weapon in x ray uh, no, uh, luggage then, then what we are going to do perception visual in focal and spatial both vis vision focal and special. So, in that case we are giving a number assigning it as 3 whereas responses we have vocal 
or maybe some manual activity. So, it is 1. Maybe working memory we may not need. So, it is 0. So, now if we try to code them. So, that is the next step which is calculate the total demand score for the visual demanding you know vigilance demanding uh, task. It says the total resource demand is 3 because 3 this is 3 plus 1 plus 0 ok. So, it is 4 ok. So, the total resource demand for 2 timed shared task is summed to predict a total demand score component and for this particular example it is 4. 4. The larger the score is the greater is the amount of interference. So, from this particular score we can understand that if there is an in requirement of the intervention or not. From the next steps we will understand where the intervention is required. So, here we understand the intervention is required or not. In the next phases the results we will see interventions are required at which direction and which step ok. Now, next step of this particular method is calculating the resource conflict score. What it says? The resource conflict scores comp score component is computed based on the extent to which the two task demand overlapping resources within the four dimensional model. So, overlapping. Okay, because that is the main agenda of this particular method that we are trying to understand where the those overlappings are and how they are actually interfering in the whole performance, okay, individual task performance. So, the, the, uh, the resource conflict score component is computed based on the extent to which the two task demand overlapping resources within the four dimensional model. Each task can compete with each other with each other each task can compete with each other task for common levels like 0, 1, 2, 3 like that ok. A multiple resource complex conflict matrix is employed to calculate the amount of interference between task element. So, we need to really draw a resource conflict matrix that we are going to show in the next slides. So, with the number of shared resource feature with the other task. Now, a two simple dimensional model need to be em employed to understand whether task is spatial or verbal and the level of its demand on perceptual cognitive versus uh, perceptual or cognitive perceptual cognitive versus the response resources. Two things. One is whether the task is spatial or verbal and the level of this particular demand, level of this particular demand on perceptual cognitive or the response resources that we need to understand. Higher the values within each cell indicate the greater conflict. Understood? So, now let us understand how do we write that particular matrix. Now, here is task A and task B. Now, first understand these. Okay? So, all values are bounded within 1 to 0. 1 means maximum possible conflict whereas, 0 means no conflict. This is again uh, uh, again the example is taken from this particular reference and it is a simplified two dimensional two dimensional conflict matrix. It can be more ok. So, right now we are talking about for our learning we are talking about two dimensional conflict matrix. So, all values are bounded between 1 to 0. 1 means maximum conflict, 0 means no conflict. Each cell like these cells, these cells, these cells ok. So, these cells uh, that shares an additional resources between its row and column increments the amount of conflict by 0.2. 
a greater conflict between the response co response component of two tasks than between the perceptual and cognitive components identical resources between two tasks involve the greatest conflict. So, colored with these oranges like these cells, these cells and these cells. As mouth cannot produce different vocal perform responses for two different tasks at the same time, it is not possible right. For, for two separate tasks, you cannot speak simultaneously together it is not possible. So, the maximum conflict value is 1 is placed in, in the bottom right cell because it is not possible. If you are talking about verbal and both the cases you need verbal, it is really not possible to, to, to produce it right. So, it is maximum possible conflict ok. So, it is not possible. So, if you have to give a command to both the task verbally, you cannot do it at one time. You have to say uh, give the command for first and then second ok depending on the priority. So, you cannot do it. So, that is why it is maximum conflict and that is why it is 1 fine. So, you understood this particular uh, uh, matrix, this matrix is very easy. easy. Now, you have given this uh, spatial and verbal and then spatial and verbal for the uh, you know uh, perception and cognition, uh, cognitive and then responses. For here also you have uh, uh, written this and then you mapped this particular model and you created this particular matrix for task A and task B. Now, here it is two tasks, it may have three tasks or four tasks ok. So, uh, according to the number of tasks, number of uh, tasks involved uh, for this analysis, the matrix will be more complex in nature. The fourth step is calculating the total interference score. What it says? The sum of total demand component and the resource com conflict component resource conflict component determines the total dual task interference score, total dual task interference score. So, if you have two tasks doing, so what you it says that total task interference score. Now, fifth step is apportion the interference score. It says this interference score can be apportioned or allocate to one task or the other or both as a function of how the operator is interfered to prioritize the two tasks. Here I said suppose for two tasks you have to give vocal command ok, verbal command. You cannot do it simultaneously, so the operator need to prioritize it. So, how these interference can be eliminated using the system design so that prioritization becomes more easy for the operator. So, here the decision makings come right. So, if it depends on the uh, operator's uh, decision, then there is always a chance of error, there is always a chance of an accident. However, if system defines yes, this should be the process, then there will be less chance of error, less chance of uh, accident. So, here is the this the, this apportion actually help us take the decision if for the designer, it helps the designer to take the decision where how to design it so that there is this particular conflict can be overcome, can, you can overcome ok. So, this is very very important and crucial step in the system design because if we cannot design it correctly then there will be always a chance that we are depending on the operator, operator's decision ok. So, if that is so then uh, there will be always a chance to miss uh, read that particular situation and there will be a chance where we can have some kind of accidents ok. Now, next step is extending this particular model. So, a simple simplified two dimensional conflict matrix can be readily you can extend in 
two ways, majorly two ways. First is if it is desired to include differences between auditory and visual presentation, then the perceptual cognitive entries get expanded from two to four. Okay. So, perceptual cognitive entries get extended from 2 to 4, this is one way and the second way is the certain special uh, circumstances may require adjustment of the values in certain cells within the conflict matrix. So, it is, it is depending on how do you want, you can do this kind of extension. So, in this particular case, it says the value in any cell characterizing the visual conflict between two tasks must be elevated to the extent that the two sources are separated out. Because if it is separated out, then it becomes very easy for the operator to go ahead with the system. Otherwise, if it is connected with each other, these resources are same, then become, uh, then it is again a decision making, again there is a chance of error, okay. So, this actually help us to give a direction where the intervention can be. So, we can understand from these code we can say the intervention is required or not from all these steps we can understand where the intervention is required. Okay. So, first says that it is required or not the next all these steps help us to understand where we should start, where we should take the decision okay being a designer or being being the you no know, system controller okay last step is the applying this particular model so any language based task or any task involving symbolic meaning is classified as verbal demand label should be uh, kept simple because if it is more complex, then it becomes very difficult for someone to analyze it. So, demand level should be kept in simple at low values where there is doubt the values within any level of the demand matrix can be set at either 0 or 1. There is no firm basis of establishment the relative weighting uh, like weightage between the demand and the resource conflict components of this particular model. So, here the experience uh, matters, uh, skill matters uh, as, as uh, you know if you keep on working you will understand how to assign them. The absolute level of interference uh, is of less importance than the relative re level comparing to dual task condition or time sharing interference. Now, let us understand the advantages of this particular method. So, it captures known empirical phenomena that influence the dual task performance in many multiple multitask environment. Okay. So, what it does? It captures known empirical for, uh, phenomena. Okay. It is very known to us. However, it help us to understand those influences in the dual task performance okay, in multiple multitask environment. It is based upon a particular theory. So, theory is already established. So, multiple resource theory that is very established theory. So, this particular tool is very, very beneficial because it is already tested. So, simple in its computation, relatively ro robust to simplification because you can do very simplified thing. We will take it in the next uh, slide. So, uh, flexible in its adaptation because you can have lot of flexibility to do lot of changes or lot of permutation combination in this particular uh, um, tool or method. So, these are the advantages. However, there are a lot of disadvantages. Every tool has, every method has advantages and disadvantages.
So, it requires some modeling experience because if you do not have then you will not be able to code them uh, uh, that uh, conflict matrix you will not be able to create. So, requires domain expertise to estimate the demand value that was that was my very take that you know if you are not experienced enough you will not be able to give the right code right value to those uh, activity ok. Model output does not translate into direct absolute measure of dual task performance, but rather it yields a relative measure of task interference between the different dual task combination. It has received only limited validation and does not account for all multitask phenomena, phenomena in particular tasks uh, you know, switching and the cognitive tunneling model as uh, assumes operator is trying to time shared task. It is it says that it operator is trying to however it is not completely true ok. So, these are the advantages. Now, take uh, more uh, you know example for this simplified two resource conflict uh, you can say from this table we have simplified from this particular table uh, like you know we simplified here for more understanding. So, task A and task B perception and cognition and the uh, responses. So, this red zone are difficult and green zones are less difficult. So, this particular matrix shows the greater conflict in the negative diagonal than the positive diagonal because uh, if you have less conflict you can go ahead whereas if you have more conflict you need to really look into like if you talk about one it is really not possible. So, it portrays the uh, inability to respond of uh, towards two tasks at one time uh, like one and the greater capacity to time share the perceptual cognitive aspects of a paired task ok. And this is the you know uh, what it says that this is like combination permutation combination ok A A B B C C A B A C B C. So, how you can uh, you can do the com permutation and com combination. So, from these conflicts from the same table we referred it and then we calculated this in say again this is from the that particular reference. So, task A it says that pure demanding and monitoring. So, its vector of demand across the two res uh, resources is 2. Task B says the standard information transmission involve perception and responses and task C is, uh, is a tracking task, uh, it is a tracking task, but has an incompatible control. So, demands are 1 and 2 ok. So, this way we have defined it uh, not we the, from the example it is defined and the demand components are computed by summing the average demand across all the resources within that particular task ne negative diagonal and across both the task if it is positive diagonal ok. We understand this is negative this is positive ok. So, the conflict components are computed by summing the conflict matrix components of all cells that are demanded by the both task ok. This is how we can implement it or use it. Now, let us understand what is the approximate time for, uh, for if you want to use it what is the kind of approximate time you require. So, it says that you know approximately 5 hours for a simple dual task problem approximately ok. So, you can have uh, break also in between and training time decreases to the extent that the user has greater familiarity with the cognitive task analysis with the domain of application. It is very true for all the methods and you need only pen and paper to compute this. 
So, you do not need any kind of software or all you can use simple pen and paper to use this but for using this particular tool ok. So, this is very very uh, useful method however, it is not very complex if you have good understanding about the perception about the cognitive task and about the domain knowledge of this particular uh, method then definitely you can have good data and you can take better decision that where the interference are and how you can give the solution towards it ok. That is all for today. So, I suggest again as I do for all the methods you take up a task and do the analysis you create the matrix and try to understand if the interferences are there or not if interferences are there how do we uh, uh, how do you go for the more uh, detailing and how do you go for the intervention to uh, to avoid these interference because as long uh, there are more interference, there are more chances of uh, accidents, more chances of error and mental workload ok. If interferences are more mental workload will increase ok. So, right now we are talking about mental workload. So, th this is how we can do this analysis and we can take advantage of it and we can implement to uh, know enhancing the whole system performance in terms of human operator in terms of the whole system ok. So, that we can do. So, that is all for today. Let us take the last topic of this particular um, uh, cognitive uh, like mental workload in the next class ok. Thank you. Mm -hmm.